a cosmic horror is chained, imprisoned by the gods themselves. But a demoness seeks his freedom. Tinley and the Shamrock Boys rush to the prison. Be brave, Tinley. Fight on, Shamrocks. You cannot fail. Or we will all be doomed. After the drop. Guess who's back? Back again. Broken's back. <laughs> Tell your friends. Share the videos and all that jazz. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. It's good to be back. Uh, took a few weeks off. <laughs> My mom got so worried I wasn't putting out videos. She was like, are you still alive? What's going on over there? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm still alive. Uh, took a little bit of a break, and uh, I'm bringing a great video for you today. So let's get to it. I'm, I have a bunch of 2 inch by 2 inch long pieces of scrap uh, left over from my pillar video, or column video. What I call them? I don't know. <laughs> Same thing, right? Tomato, tomato. Anyway, I decided I wanted to do something with some of the leftover pieces. Uh, so I took uh, two 6 inch lengths of the two by two inch column, glued them together. I was gonna do a platform and I thought, well, let's light it up, baby. So I went through my LED collection and I wanted to pick a color. I knew I wanted to do a prison, like a, a godly prison, an immortal prison, and I wanted it, you know me, modular, <laughs> right? Why make it for one occasion when you can make it and attempt to reuse it over and over and over again? So. I wanted a prison that would imprison good gods and bad gods, you know, demons, monsters, angels, just a random prison. So with that in mind, I decided purple would be a great way to go. It's, um, it tends towards darker, I guess, powers, purple, but, um, white light would have been a little too positive, you know, too heavenly a prison. And, uh, and a darker bulb would have been a little, like red, would have been a little too evil a prison. So I liked the idea of this light purple. And uh, I carve out a depression for my uh, platform, which I'm going to carve some runes into eventually. I glue the LED in at the bottom, um, making a, a slot for the battery. And then my tinfoil trick to help bounce around, reflect, and really increase that light you get out of a single LED. It's a great trick and I highly recommend it. Next I'm gonna cut, um, so my platform size is two by two, and I go ahead and cut like a two and a quarter by two and a quarter, maybe two and a half by two and a half piece of paper, or I'm sorry, some thin chip. This is actually from a Star Crunchers box. I love those things, they're super tasty. Uh, nice job, Tiny Deborah. <laughs> They're fantastic. Uh, once trimmed, uh, once trimmed out, I'm going to glue some tin foil to the back of it, and this is just going to in uh, increase that reflection and really multiply the light from our tiny little LED. I draw a circle. Um, I can't remember the size. I used like one of these little glasses I use for uh, water when I'm doing painting, and then. Um, I draw a similar line equal around all edges and then it's just carving runes and this took a while so, <laughs> so I'm not going to show you all of it but here's an example of what it does when laid over the LED and this is the uh, piece completed. You can see I've done some smaller runes then some larger runes and then just some uh, a couple more cutouts just to really increase it and then I realized because I was going to flank this thing with two just columns and I'm like no nah, I gotta light them up <laughs> like let's make this project so much harder on myself so that's what I did <laughs> here's that star cruncher box I love this thin chip it's very useful for this kind of project it uh, um, holds cuts very well and you can cut out small detailed runes and the LEDs just blaze through them. I love it. So I cut it in strips here. I place the glue all over it 
and then I glue it to tin foil. Once again, to increase all that reflection, we want these lights, these runes, and these pillars to just beam when we turn our lights on. So with that in mind, um, and the glue dry, I go ahead and I trim my pieces out. And I'm gonna let that tin foil work as a, like a joint for the panels of the column so that I can fold. It kind of works and it kind of doesn't. Um, you're probably gonna need to reinforce yours. I had one that held together just fine and one of them that split on me. If it splits on you, no big deal. Uh, just continue with the project and you'll have to um, glue those together uh, when you're gluing them or attaching them to the base. Um, so each column is, has four sides, and of course, <laughs> to be extra difficult, we need to light up all four sides. So I'm just gonna scribble out some ruins. Um, and so I go three across. You can see I've measured a half inch from each side of each panel, so that one inch um, on every panel is getting the runes, except for one where I marked a one inch by one inch square. This is where I'm going to attach my chains uh, for my prison effect. Um, now that I have the uh, runes done, I'm going to turn to some two by two inch blocks that are two and a quarter tall. And this quarter inch is so that I have some place to glue the panels with the runes carved out. And then I'm going to stuff. This is a um, fantastic tip because the holidays are coming up. The dollar store carries these small little uh, 10 LED light sets. Uh, they're a buck 25 for Halloween. They come in purple, which is what you're seeing now, orange, and in Christmas time, red, green, and white. And then you can find other colors throughout the year. I highly recommend if you see these, when they come into your dollar store, pick some up. They're a great way to get some cheap but amazing lighting for your projects. Um, yeah, do it up. Uh, it's much easier than stringing LEDs like I did in my Hell Throne. Although in that aspect, I was able to change the colors of the lights and have a, an ombre effect. This one, I'm just going solid color. So this string of dollar store lights is amazing for me. I'm gonna stuff four in each column and leave two for the middle. But before I can uh, attach the runes, um, you need to diffuse that light. If you have them go up just the way they are, you will see an empty chamber lit by LEDs from below. And that is not the effect we're going for. So I'm gonna tr uh, trim out some parchment paper and parchment paper doesn't hold glue. So you're not gonna glue the parchment paper. You're going to run a track of hot glue around all edges. That hot glue is gonna stick to the tin foil and work like a track system to hold the parchment paper in place. And as long as nobody's poking at your runes, it's gonna hold really well. And if you see somebody poking at your runes, man, get them out of there. <laughs> you banished. <laughs> now that I have the parchment paper uh, all set up, I am going to start gluing the panels for the columns in place. You can see I've marked a quarter inch from the top, and this is just so I can keep everything nice and even and straight. And uh, later I will find out that I messed these up somehow, and one column is actually larger than the other. Um, I ultimately lead, lean into this mistake later on. I'll explain a little bit more as we get further on. With all four panels hot glued, it is looking good. You can see I've got the, the one um, column set up. I'm ready to move on and get this middle all taken care of, but that means first I have to cut out and undo <laughs> the LED work that I had done previously. So I'm gonna open that channel up a bit wider, push the LED through, clean the space up, and then I'm gonna cut a little bit more. And instead of having the one LED come up from the middle of the top, um, to utilize these, the string of lights in the, in the way they are set up, I'm gonna have the far four 
um, in the column like it is now and then the two middle ones one from that column pushed up diagonally on this side and then I'm going to push the other one diagonally up on the other side and then I'm going to patch the middle hole with some tin foil and now my platform is going to absolutely beam I'm going to have two LEDs instead of just the one and I'm going to have all that tin foil still really helping uh, bounce all that light around so now that I've got my hole in place, I'm going to hot glue the pillar to the side. This is going to allow me to fish the LED in. Once in place, I'm going to hot glue it, and then I'm going to hot glue the other one. Patch that middle part with a little tin foil, and let's grab that plate and check it out. And those columns look great, and you'll notice the issue with the plate here. We need to put that parchment paper on it. Here you can see I've dug out a well for the battery port and made sure there was plenty of room for the switch. Man, this thing's looking fantastic. Four lights to each column, two for the middle part. Can't wait. So the, uh, those, those panels were pretty messy and it's time to cover them up with a little uh, stonework. I'm going to take some dollar store foam and rip it into strips. One side is a quarter inch and one is a quarter inch and then the width of the foam itself. I can't remember exactly what it is. It's a strange measure, uh, measurement. Just make sure you measure the width of whatever material you use to cover up your edges and uh, measure and cut accordingly. Then I rip some strips of foam through my Proxon, which is about all I'm good for, is uh, ripping thin strips. I'm gonna show you some shapes I tried later on. Man, I'm just not good with the Proxon. Uh, but practice makes perfect, right? I'll just keep trying. Um, I rip some uh, stairs. My stairs are th three quarter inch deep. I find that this is the like most scale you can get the stairs while still remaining playable there's some other tricks uh for like wooden stairs you can leave a gap and things but for these stone stairs i like this three quarter inch and then they're a quarter inch high i measure the sides and just start to decorate things with trim and stuff i've got these cool sloping uh uh, pieces along the side of each of the stairs. I'm going to hit those pieces with trim and again have it uh, Have the trim come around the sides as well. I actually end up doing a lot of trim pieces on this uh, Trim for the panels and then inside the trim I go just a little bit further and do a much smaller trim on the inside um, and Hopefully I'll show that off or you can see it um, when we zoom in now it's time to lay some tiles. I'm going to uh, rip some even thinner foam, probably uh, uh, about an eighth inch thick, maybe a little, uh, maybe a sixteenth. It's, it's fairly thin. I'm going to cut it into half inch squares and then quarter by half inch longs and then little quarter by quarter cubes or squares and just start laying tiles. Go crazy. Um, cover everything up, cut tiles to fit where you need to. Uh, they end up looking fantastic. I love the tiled look, and it's a lot of fun to do. And uh, it's time to turn to the chain. I buy rolls of chain from Michaels or Hobby Lobby uh, whenever they go on sale. Just make sure it's chain-like and of the proper scale. Um, you'll notice I work with uh, multiple types of chain, and my favorite is a uh, black chain that has incredibly square links it's it looks great to scale unfortunately i had to buy it as a necklace and it was fairly expensive the chain in the rolls is so much cheaper and so although it's not a perfect uh scale representation of chain it works really well and i don't mind using it at all uh, there's these little jewelry pieces and the eyepiece that I use to create the um, connection to where the chain will be held to the pillar. Use a couple of those little uh, sticker studs as like accents or bolts holding it in and then each one glued to the either side. And 
it was hard to get chain measurements without actually put uh, putting everything together. So as you can see, the chains are way too long. My hope was to have them connect and have this ring of chain almost hover off of the piece. Um, that would give me a real cool look when nobody's in it, but at the same time I wanted it to be modular. And uh, here I am showing you how I got the modularity for actually putting figures in. I had a neck that necklace piece I was telling you about, the clasp, and I created this bit where it, you could open and close the main loop for different sized minis. So I can get huge minis, and I will show that off later in the video. I can get huge minis into this thing, all the way down to just Sir Scale, my, you know, my mini for scale that I always use. In order to do this, I just created the little, uh, little necklace clasp with the adjustments on the end, and then bolted to each chain on the sides. And here you can see I'm testing it on my largest mini, my Pumpkin King. And if you haven't seen that video, Man, I'd love for you to check it out. It's a project that I'm really proud of. I think he really looks cool, very creepy. And uh, the video didn't quite get the love I was hoping for. So if you want to check him out, that would be great. After this video, of course. <laughs> and here you see my shape attempts with the Proxon. I couldn't figure out how to top these. I thought these two like kind of spikes would be really cool. But, and maybe they would have been cooler. I'm not not particularly happy with them um but it is <laughs> it's what i went with i don't know i cleaned them up a little bit with the exacto and uh they don't look too bad they're serviceable but uh they're serviceable <laughs> for a second there i was like oh do a big blade and in the middle will be runes on the blade and then i'm like well shit then i gotta dig the column like i gotta rip the column apart and string those lights up into the blades and i'm like broken terrain dude at some point you just gotta stop you need to get a video out dude stop it so <laughs> that's why those things are on the top <laughs> anyway uh some chip uh everybody's going back to school if you buy a big box of those chips for lunches man save that chipboard that stuff is like gold it's nice and thick and it's sturdy it makes great base material great building material make sure everyone in the family knows that you're looking for that that uh chipboard when that box is empty don't let that go to waste <laughs> There you can see the inner trim there. That's a fantastic shot. I'm laying down the Black Magic Craft uh, base coat, which is half black matte paint and half matte Mod Podge. This is going to give you the black base coat and strengthen this foam up. Then, you know I love my uh, Gray Storm, brand new favorite gray color. I'm going to get the whole darn thing in it. Uh, paying really close attention not to lay it on thick near the runes and then brushing it on carefully so that you don't get any of the excess paint down there in the parchment. Next I'm going to go over all of the major trim in khaki. This matches my paint scheme with almost all of my other projects. This is going to allow the prison of the gods to just sit down on any table landscape that I create and just fit right in. I turn to a new color I've been using, cobblestone gray, and I'm gonna paint the inner trim cobblestone. This was, it looks beautiful, but <laughs> by the end of this step, I'm like, can this project just be done? Oh my God. Four colors for the stone, burnt umber, honey brown, chocolate bar, and light cinnamon. There she is. Let's do it, cinnamon. <laughs> This this project took it didn't take a while. It took a little bit of time off, but by the end of it, it was like, come on, come on, come on, come on. You got to get this video. Hurry up, hurry up. <laughs> yeah, boy, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> the four colors. Trace the stuff. Uh, like <laughs> reset. Breathe. Broken. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Space your stones out. 
try to randomly fill the space with a certain color and set the set the ratio of the colors and then just kind of continue that randomly throughout the project you get a really cool stone effect um, i'm really happy with the tiles they look amazing they add great pops of color and the project looks great lit up or or when it's not lit up just sitting there i love it i'm gonna hit it with my black homemade wash it's gonna mute all the colors all that stone, the, the khaki trim, it's all going to mute down with my black wash. And then I'm going to go back in with the granite gray and just give everything a nice, well, I'd say a pretty, pretty generous dry brush. Maybe a sloppy dry brush if we're, if we're uh, being serious here. But uh, this, this uh, dry brush with the granite gray is just going to blend everything together all those colors of stone they're all going to pick up the granite gray and start to merge together it, it just all comes together i love it it looks fantastic i'm really happy with the project uh there were some challenges but uh i got through them and i'm absolutely pumped i love the modularity of the prison you can unhook and clasp it to a mini of darn near any size darn near any size down from a standard sir scale and this is my son's unpainted dragon i wanted to pull it out just to see if it would work it fits perfectly around the dragon's neck love it and here's my setup i have a cosmic horror chained up to the prison of the gods and our demoness with her undead minions are trying to unlock it. Tinley and the Shamrock boys are up there attempting to stop her. Boy, I hope they can. You certainly don't want to unleash a cosmic horror on the world. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Oh, thank you so much for checking out the video. I had a blast making it, uh, even though it was challenging at times. <laughs> it was still fun, and I love the way it ultimately end, uh, ended up looking. Even those weird bits on the top don't bother me so much now. <laughs> thank you so much, everybody. Smash that like button on the way out. I would really appreciate it. Did I do a good job with this craft, this project? Did you enjoy this video? Hey, maybe you buy me a coffee and smash that super uh, thanks button down there. That would be awesome. If you're not subscribed and want to keep getting videos like this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. That would really help me out. Head over to my Subscribestar if you want to help out the channel on a monthly basis. I have a pen and paper RPG over there that you will get for a $10 a month uh, subscription at my Subscribestar. So check out the link below. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, like each other, love each other, and craft on.